Hey everyone, Andrew here, and today I'm going to talk about something near and dear to my heart. Okay, so some of you that know me and have met me and know that I am a theater nerd and a theater fan and had dreams of being an actor and performing, and I started doing theater in middle school and continued it well into college. And I actually have a Bachelor in Fine Arts for theater as a result. And I, so, being a theater nerd, I love plays. And I love reading different plays and coming across different types of stories. And my absolute favorite play that I've ever come across is called Beyond Therapy. It is by Christopher Durang. It is a, it's a lighthearted dark comedy, which is a weird way to say it, but it's, it's a bizarre twisted comedy. So Chris, Christopher Durang is very weird with the way he writes. And it's really interesting because he has a really good use of language and the way of words and using things like one of his well-known, like Beyond Therapy is, is probably his well, most well-known play, but play, but his second best well-known play is called The Marriage of Bet and Boo. And that's the only Christopher Durang play that I've had the opportunity to see. And that one's really interesting because it's about it's a it's about him and his parents specifically as the titular Bet and Boo, who um, got married and tried to have this big family because that's all the mom wanted, and only were able to have one kid and had lots and lots of stillborn babies. And that one is definitely a dark comedy because the running main running joke is dead babies. Now that shouldn't work. How do you make, how in the world can you possibly make dead babies funny? But Christopher Durang is crazy enough and bizarre enough and can use situations and language well enough that he makes it work. I mean, you get to a point in that play where the parents have been to the hospital six or seven times and this is one of the last times they're going to be at the hospital and the dad is telling the rest of the family to pray that it's going to be a girl because a girl has a better chance of surviving and from off stage you see this thing thrown on stage in a pink bundle and you just hear the doctor from off stage going it was a girl and it's like horrific and I was rolling in the aisles laughing because it was so funny and so well done. And it's like, how? How did this work? And it's like, because Kisser for Durang is a crazy genius. Beyond Therapy is a much easier to swallow thing than that. Like, so, like, Beyond Therapy is the story of Bruce and Prudence, two Manhattanites who, um, are both seeing different psychologists and have been suggested that they should play, like, place slash answer to a personal ad in the newspaper for a date. And they end up with each other. And I'm just going to sum down what happens in the very first date to try to tell you what. Because to me, the opening of this play is one of the best things I've ever read. It's hilarious. And I might be overselling it, and I apologize if this doesn't come through from my performance, but I will do my best. So, it starts off with, oh, hey, are you? And it's like, yes, I'm this. It's like, oh, thank you, come, have a seat. I love your voice. And she's like, oh, thank you, I like your voice as well. Oh, uh, and it's like, I like your breasts. That's the first things I notice in a woman. Um, uh, thank you? Um... I like the way your deodorant smells. Oh, thank you. My lover Bob picked it out for me. I'm sorry? No, my lover... Yeah, Bob. You remind me of him, kind of. Are, are you gay? He's like, no, I'm bisexual. Are you? No, I'm not. I'm straight. And it just keeps building on this and building and building and building and building to the point where they're screaming at each other in this restaurant and they pick up the glasses of water and splash it in each other's face and just look at each other and look around the room and look at each other and go, 
what in the world do you have to do to get service in this restaurant? And it's just this buildup of the bizarreness and the thing. And it's, I love it. It's one of the, my favorite things I've ever read. And it's such a good, it continues the story throughout. I think the beginning is the best. And I think it never truly lives up to that as a play. But I think Altogether is still an amazing story, and I absolutely love every part of it. So when I got the heard about the fact that there is a filmed version, I you know jumped at the chance to see it because I loved the play. I loved just reading the play. Like that says something. I've never even seen the play, and it's my favorite play. Like the and so I'm like, oh, I'm gonna, I have to see this. I need, I should watch this. And, uh, Beyond Therapy, the movie, is by far the absolute worst adaptation of, definitely of a play that I've ever seen. It's by far one of the worst adaptations of anything I've ever seen. It is just god awful horrible just and let me try to explain why so the easiest way to do that is to talk about that opening scene so the way the film does the opening scene is we introduce the characters we get the they start talking you get the first couple the first two compliments and then as they're talking to each other as we're about to get to the first really good joke the camera slowly pans away from them until we can't really hear them speaking anymore. Showing the rest of the restaurant, which is empty, by the way. Then it cuts to what Bob is doing. And then it cuts to what Andrew the waiter is doing, who is barely a character in the play. And then it cuts to what Bob's mother is doing, who isn't even a character in the play. She is a voice that we don't hear on the phone. And then it's like, it cuts back to Prudence and Bruce, and you realize we just cut the very tail end of a joke, but you don't even hear enough of the joke for it to be funny. And then, oh, here's the next joke. Oh, nope, it's cut to someone else. And it's like, the f are you doing? This is a play. This is dialogue. We need to hear the dialogue. That's how a comedy works. Especially when it's based off a play. Just... And that's just the beginning. That's just the first ten minutes. Everything about this is the absolute worst thing I've I. It's just... Yeah. Ugh. And I looked into a little bit of what's going on. And I read... I have the Christopher Durang complete plays, which includes Beyond Therapy, and, like, he explains a little bit into this, and I will just, I'm just gonna read verbatim what he says about the play, because it is just, sums it really well, or what he sums about the film. Anyway, and it's basically, he literally says this, which is, the film version by Robert Altman is horrific, unfunny, pushed, and the script rewritten by him so that all the psychology is thrown out the window and the characters dash around acting crazy, but with literally no behavioral logic behind underneath it. I should have taken my name off the film, but for complicated, wrong reasons, I didn't. Yeah, that, that sums us up perfectly. It's a play called Beyond Therapy in which two of the four main characters are psychologists. And he rewrote it to have almost no psychological elements to it. Just, yeah. And Robert Altman's not a bad director. Although this makes me think he's a horrible director. But Robert Altman is a somewhat well-known director. He's done a couple of really great things. He's most well known for MASH, McCabe and Miss Miller, Nashville, um, the Prairie Home Companion, and I knew him from Popeye, which 
is the Robert Robin Williams musical where he plays the titular Popeye, which is actually pretty good. I still think it. I think it's pretty good. It's flawed, but it's good. So, but this is a director who's been nominated five times for Best Director and made some of the most interesting movies out there. I mean, his film M.A.S.H. was so successful and so popular that it made one of the longest-running television shows of all freaking time off of it. And yet, he took this play, this amazing, beautiful, hilarious play, and turned it into the most god-awful adaptation I've come across. And this isn't the first of these that I've come across, either. I've come across a couple like this. this the one that pops in my brain the most, where they, it's like they took a stage play and didn't want to do it, so they did something bizarre about it. It's like, you, there's this one, Beyond Therapy, but there's also this one called The Boyfriend. The Boyfriend is a play that came out in 1971, starred this big celebrity of the 70s named Twiggy. And it is based off a Broadway play, which was a musical. That's all about, you know, trying to get a boyfriend, dating. Basically, I'm pretty certain it's set in the early 1920s, so it's all about the flappers and all that fun stuff. But the filmed version of it barely shows anything from the play. The entirety of the film is more about a small-time theater company putting on a production of The Boyfriend and having their assistant sage manager playing the lead because the main leading lady's too drunk or something. And it all about the actors in this play trying to get impress a theater critic who's at this show so they can go or, you know, so they have a chance to go off and do better things. So that you're just showing shots of them trying to one up each other backstage, trying to build and build to these bigger, more elaborate things. And yet it's called The Boyfriend. It's an adaptation of the play. And yet you don't even show much of the freaking play. And for those of you that are wondering how in the world I even know this thing exists, my high school did a production of The Boyfriend. I've seen the actual musical. It's it's okay. It's not bad. It's not great. It's I can definitely understand why you would want to do something a little different with it, because it's very cut and dry. You know, there's much better versions of the st that type of story. That said... You chose to do an adaptation of The Boyfriend, and then you chose to do none of The Boyfriend in your adaptation. <laughs> and that's what sort of feels like with Beyond Therapy, of just, you chose to do an adaptation of Beyond Therapy, and then you flat out ignore everything that the play is built on. That's like me sitting here, talking to you about a book, doing a book review, and as I'm talking, I slowly let the camera just rotate away from me, showing you the rest of my room as my voice flows quieter and quieter. Yeah, see, that is stupid. Like, even if you want to know what the rest of my room looks like, there are better ways to do that. Also, a little sub thing that I found out when I was looking into this and that, it's a film, it's a play set in New York, filmed entirely in Paris. Now, that's not a big thing. I normally, if the film was decent, I wouldn't give a damn about that. Or if it was film, if it was set in a place that's like, oh yeah, this will be really hard to get the money to do filming for this. Or it'd be like, or we could have done this in, he's like, you could have done this in a soundstage. You could have actually filmed this in New York. New York is not that pricey of a city to do filming in. How do I know? Because they film a lot of movies in New York. Just. Yeah, honestly, like, I don't know what drugs this director was on when he filmed this. And it's really sad because the film had potential. I mean, it's it's got a decent director. 
it's a good play. It has a good cast. It's got Julie Haggerty, Linda Jackson, and the lead, the one playing Bruce, like, fits Bruce almost perfectly. One of the, like, one of the best choices to be the person to film this. And that is that it was starring Jeff Goldblum. Now, this is young Jeff Goldblum because this was made in 87. So he's still got the looks, you know, and it, like, to be fair, Jeff, Jeff Goldblum has never lost looks. He still looks amazing today. But, you know, he fit the role very, very well. Because Bruce is supposed to be someone who is very masculine and yet a little feminine at the same time. And is someone who's very soft-spoken. Like, when I was reading it, if I, you asked me to just say who I thought would be perfect for this role... Jeff Goldblum would have been one of the names I came up with. Because it fit in perfectly. It's his kind of comedy. It's something that he could really, you know, he's a good comedian. He can bite into that and get the best performance out of it. And we could, I, that might have happened. I don't know. The camera's not on him long enough to see. And then it's like, and he, as I said, he's the director is building up parts for characters who are ultimately unimportant. No one cares what Bob's mother is doing. No one cares. Not even Bob. Uh, and it's like, and it cuts, it's like, what's Bob doing while Jeff, while Bruce is on this date? And I'm like, unless he's outside the window spying on them, I don't care. It's not important. It's, this isn't Bob's story. It's Bruce and Prudence's story. It's about them and dealing with this new world and this type of thing where, you know, there are people who are bisexual and this was still a somewhat new thing in 87. It's, shoot, it's still a somewhat new thing today. You know, 30, almost over 30 years later and it's still, like, we, there's still, like, oddness about people that are bisexual and all that. But honestly, it's a play that works so well with the language, so well when it's told. And there is a way you could do this and have it be amazing. You chose, like, the worst person in the world got the script for this and chose to make it. Because, I like, to me, I've never understood how you can do bad adaptations of stage plays. I mean, there, it can be done. I know it. I've seen a number of them. But it's like, for the most part, if you stick to the script, you do okay. Like, even the worst, some of the some of the ones that had the weirdest choices, if you stuck somewhat to the script, you get more forgiveness in the long run. You know, and it's and there's still something to like about it, because the thing about plays, and the reason that some of them work in the ways in that this can be worked, especially with stuff like this, is they're fine-tuned. They're made to be performed, and there been every single little piece of it has been tweaked and prodded and made to fit into the best, most efficient, well-performed version of it as possible. And when I was reading through the information about the play and reading who was in the original cast, I would have loved to see this because they had John Lithgow as Bruce, and. They also had a version with Sigourney Weaver as Prudence. And, like, Sigourney Weaver is a good fit for Prudence because, quite frankly, Prudence is based off Sigourney Weaver. It's such a good play. It's such a well-told story. And please, if you can get your hands on it, take a look at it. It's hilarious. It's well-written. It's Like, anything by Christopher Durang, I've, I've found to be very good. It's like... It's like you have Marriage of Bet and Boo, you have Beyond Therapy, there's a Baby with the Bathwater, which is really good. Hilarious. They're all, like, he has a really great use of language and the way of storytelling. And I highly recommend it. And I highly recommend reading the play. I What I do not recommend at all is this film. I can't even call this an in-name-only adaptation, because for the most part, it follows the story fairly well. 
when it chooses to have the camera on the story. Like, it's not like um, who framed Roger Rabbit versus who censored Roger Rabbit, where it's like there's dramatic differences. Or even a lot of other ones where it's like they're so dramatically different that they're completely different creatures. This is... a You can see the play as it was. And you can just see that who, like they, the whoever decided to direct that day was drunk off his ass. And it's like, let's film the room! And to be fair, if you want to make that kind of adaptation, alright, you're going to make one of the worst adaptations ever made. But you could do that with anything. Imagine uh, some of the greatest stories ever told, adapted in this style. Call me Ishmael as I... Nope, nope, we're going to look at the ocean, not hear any of the story. So that, to me, is by far probably the worst adaptation of anything I've ever come across. As a, a, like, And that's saying something, because stage plays are somewhat easier to adapt than books or video games or something. And there's a lot of bad of those, but at least they are telling a story somewhat. This one barely feels... It feels like... Like I said, it feels like a drunk toddler filmed the whole thing and just decided to go wander around with the camera instead of shoot the thing it was supposed to be shooting. And, yeah. That's all I'm going to say on that one. Um, do any of you have some bad adaptations that you'd like to talk about or you'd like me to talk about? Because I have an entire list on Letterboxd that I will include in the link below that's just... These are, to me, some of the worst things I've ever seen adapted. And, yeah. I, like, this is on there. The Boyfriend's on there. Uh, the Cat in the Hat. Bewitched. Things like that are all on there. So, yeah, let me know what you guys think. Uh, if you guys would like to see me do a couple more like this, where I talk about a play, or talk about an adaptation, or something, let me know. I mean, I'm, I've read a number of plays, but I haven't read enough that I would really do, like, a lot, but I don't have a problem talking about more plays. Granted, this one I barely gave you the synopsis of, so if you'd like me to do a full-on synopsis where I talk about every single part of this play, please let me know. I will gladly do that. Uh, that's all I got for today. Happy reading, y'all!